All right, welcome back to Photoshop. So today I'm gonna to give you some quick tips on things that you should do to the program before you actually ever start using it. This is gonna help you speed up your workflow and just make life a whole lot easier when using the program. The first one I actually have a dedicated video for, but what we'll do is we're gonna go up here to Photoshop and into Preferences. Now, if you're on a PC, I think Preferences under Edit and they're down here somewhere, but just go ahead and check. They should be one of those two spots. So we'll go in here to General just to start this off with. But what I wanna do is just let you know, look, you need to go through every one of these and really look and see what they say and can apply things once you understand what they do. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few different options that I think are gonna be helpful for you to make sure that they're either selected or not selected when you're using the program. The first one's gonna be inside tools. And you notice there's a whole bunch of different things that you select. One is show tool tips. So let's go ahead and see what that means. And what that means is when you hover over something, it tells you what it is, that's what it is. So when you're beginning, if it's helpful for you to have these things pop up, that's great. I have it for tutorials because I think they're beneficial. But when I'm just working on my own, I don't want these tooltips popping up all the time. So in that case, I will disable them. And there's a whole bunch of different things in here. So you can zoom with your scroll wheel if you like doing that. If you've ever used Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, you'll note that you can control your brush size by using the scroll wheel. In this case, if you wanted to use the zoom with the scroll wheel, that would be something that you could check. One that I like, one that I like is zoom click point to center, meaning if you click and then you zoom, it zooms from this point. The next thing we're gonna do is go down to scratch disks. And this is the one that's probably the most important and most people have no idea what it means. Photoshop needs a good amount of space to work and work efficiently. If you don't have that space on your internal hard drive, you can see I've got 803 gigabytes, which is definitely plenty. You need to move your scratch disk to either another internal drive or an external drive that has extra space for you to work on. All you would need to do is uncheck one and go to the other drive that you want it to go to. This is really gonna save you a lot of time because if anybody's ever seen scratch disk pull pop, that's what it means. And then you're just gonna go through the rest of these, making sure everything is selected and how you want it set up. But there's a lot of stuff that you can set up in Photoshop and it's definitely worth your time when you first start to go through and make sure it's set up how you want. A lot of it is just how it looks. One is to, do you wanna be in pixels or do you wanna be in inches? Do you wanna be in centimeters for your rulers? A whole bunch of different stuff that you can select to configure how things work. You can see I live in the United States, but I'm using pixels because most work that I do is pixel based. The next one, and we're gonna slide on all the way over here is the way your screen is set up and used. You can see mine's usually set up in a very particular manner. Occasionally things are changed up a little bit and that's because I might be doing something different and I need to open up a new panel window. But basically, if you come over here to this icon, you click this window down, you've got a whole bunch of pre-configured ones. So we'll do photography in this sense, and you can see it's set up for how it thinks you might work as a photographer. And now what this is going to allow us to do is configure or set this up. And the first thing that we have are these two little arrows right up here pointing to the right. This will hide, show the panel. Now when you hide it, the options are still under here. So I can click on the info palette and it will pop up. But if you had a smaller laptop and you needed more room for your image, this is an option because you might not use info panel all the time. So you can just get it to pop up when you need it. So these will open and close. Notice there's one right there and there's one right there. And you can have as many of these panel windows as you want. It's also helpful if you have two monitors to move all these panels over to another monitor, and then you could just have your image on one screen. Another option that you'll see is right here in actions and history. We've got two different tabs. So it's in the same area, but it's two different tabs. And it's really easy. All you need to do is just drag something up and you can highlight it 
and then it will put it as a new tab in that location. Now, if you want to move this to its own spot, you would come down and you see that blue line. That means it's putting it in between those two areas. And now that's going to have its own spot. If you wanted to remove something, you would just go up here and say close. In this case, that will close that. But if you have one where there's multiple items, you would use close for just getting rid of history or close tab group to get rid of history and actions. So that's an option. So learning how to configure this is a little bit difficult. I think it's hard for people to figure out like where things can go. And you can go in between panels, click, hold. This is left click, hold, drag up and down. Sometimes these don't let you do that. But you know, let's say you don't need that much room for history or in this case, adjustments, which I don't have up, is one that doesn't really need a lot of space. So you can see adjustments up here doesn't need that much space because this is all that you ever have. So we can come down here and drag this up. So that's all that we see and that gives layers a whole lot more space and something that we do need more area as far as display. Right here, you'll notice I have large icons and you can control the size of these icons. So if I right click, notice we have no thumbnails. I can right click again and do small thumbnails. Notice when you do that, it just shows there's an adjustment, but not what kind of an adjustment. When you go to medium, it gives you the type of adjustment. And in my case, because I have such a large monitor, I think it's helpful for me to use large icons so people can see what's going on. So that's the configuration over here. And then once you get it set up, you can see I've got my own. You would just come down here. So I would just put new workspace. And when I do that, it's gonna bring up a little window and it lets me configure it exactly how I want. The next option is the toolbar over here. So if you're looking at my toolbar and you are looking at your toolbar, you might notice that mine's set up completely differently. Well, that's because I've configured it. So what we would do is go up here to edit and then go down to toolbar. Everything over here is how my toolbar is presently configured. Over here are the items that I don't have available over here. Why? Well, because I just don't really actually use them. Down here, we've got some show icons. So you'll notice right here, when I click that again, this will bring it back up. This lets me find or get access to these items in case I actually did need them. So what that means is I'll hit done and I'll come over here. If I click and I hold, I've got access over here to all the different icons that I'm currently don't have set up in the toolbar at this moment. Whichever one I select would be selected here. So if I clicked here, and did slice select tool, notice the slice tool comes up. Remember in the key bar, there's that little teeny tiny triangle right there. If that triangle appears, that means you have other tools underneath it. So you click and hold and you go underneath it to find those tools. So let's go back up here to the toolbar and see how that works. So you can see these would be the two tools right up here. Notice it has an arrow or well, Y because this one is the one that's below it. If I wanted this to have its own space on the toolbar, I would just drag that out. And then you can see now we have these two tools in two different sp spots. If I want it to be underneath, I drag it back up in so it's in the same box. Really simple and easy to do. Right here, we have the quick keys for the tools. And as I scroll down, these are all the different tools that I have. And what I want is, the ones that I use a lot, I don't want them nested below because it takes a long time to get to it. The ones that I use most of the time, I just want them out so it's easy for me to just click on it and not have to go inside to get and find it. Right here, this will hide and show your foreground and background color right over there. So you notice as I click it, it hides and show. This is to get the quick mask. And this is to show the different views that you can get. So you would hit F, 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 and it would control the different views that you see. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. So F, that's the same thing as clicking this, doing all these different modes. And once you've got your toolbar all set up, you can come in here and save that. So you can just set save preset, give it its own custom name, and you're going to be ready to go. Now, very similar to that, we're gonna go up to edit and you'll notice that you have the availability 
are keyboard shortcuts and menus. And right here will allow you to choose any of the different spaces that you wanna go into. And then it will allow you to come in here and change or reconfigure the different quick keys or keyboard shortcuts that you have available. So if there's something that you wanna have as a keyboard shortcut but doesn't exist, you can do that here. And if there's one that you wanna remove, you could do that as well. You can also sort of do this as an action. We won't get into that, but there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts that I actually create into an action instead of giving a quick key. It's just another way to do it because what you can do with an action is you can actually associate a quick key with it as well. So let's say I wanted to change open. I could click on open. I could change O to something different. I would hit accept and that would apply that quick key adjustment. I can also delete them or add shortcuts. That is the ability to change keyboard shortcuts and menus. And remember, you can do it for a whole bunch of different locations. So you can do the panels, which are over here, these guys over here. So anything that you would wanna do. And it's really easy to see what keyboard shortcuts are. So if I just go up to window and come over here, notice that one's five, six. So if I go up to image adjustments, that right here, your keyboard shortcut is command L, command M. This would be control M, control L on a PC. And it allows you to configure that exactly how you wanna see it. The last one is gonna be your color settings. And this is important for color management. It doesn't really make a difference what you have set, just that you manage color. Because if you stop managing color, the person on down the line is gonna have a difficult time achieving good color. So we're gonna go up here to edit and to color settings. And these are the color settings that I use. So working spaces is what you're working in. Like what space, color space do I wanna use? And we have those for RGB, CMYK, grayscale, spot color. The next option is color management policies. Let's say we're trying to open up an image, but its color profile is sRGB. I'm working in Adobe, so if I hit convert to working RGB, it's automatically gonna convert that from sRGB to Adobe RGB, which is exactly what we want. We have preserve in which it would leave it as sRGB, or off in which it won't do anything. In my case, I switch all of RGB, CMYK and grayscale to convert. I also have this box and this box ticked for profile mismatches and missing profiles. Missing profiles are just that don't have profiles associated with it or when they're different. So in that case, when sRGB comes in and it wants to open it as Adobe, if I have this ticked, it's gonna ask me before it converts it. It's gonna say, do you wanna convert this to the working profile? I can either hit yes or no. There are times where I've worked on an image and I've converted it to sRGB because it's gonna go on the web, but I messed something up, so I'm gonna open it and tweak it. I don't change the color profile because I eventually, after I make the quick adjustment, I do want it to be in sRGB. So those are the few tasks that I think can really help you when you're learning to use Adobe Photoshop. You do need to configure this stuff to get it to work exactly how you want. So if you see something on my computer that looks completely different, that is because I've been using some of these options and that's why my computer looks different from yours. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>